seems to be a very popular subject uh, about hobbling the horse. And I think it's something that uh, I need to follow up on and keep everybody um, engaged in how to do this and why we do it. Uh, if you look on our channel, there's some other videos that pertain to hobbling that will help you learn how to prepare your horse to hobble. That will, uh, it's kind of some preliminary things that you need to look at those videos before you do what I'm doing here today. The purpose for hobbling is, is for many reasons. Um, it tells me a lot about a horse. It requires a horse to yield to pressure. And that tells me a whole lot about what's going on in his mind. Um, you know, our goal here is before we start schooling a horse on his back, we want to condition his mind to be prepared to learn. Well, the first step, I think, is to get him in the state of mind where he'll yield. And I never want to get on a horse, or I don't want anybody that uh, works with me to get on a horse that's not prepared to ride. If, if he explodes when uh, something happens, or he spooks, or he wants to be resistive, and his only solution is to explode, that's high stakes gambling and you're gonna lose. Um, so what we're trying to do here is to get this horse to where, say if he were to spook, rather than to bolt, we wanna be able to control him in the time of need. So he needs to yield and give to pressure. If I tie him up and he wants to pull back, he needs to yield to that pressure. If he gets caught in the trailer and pinched or claustrophobic in the trailer, he needs to yield to that pressure. And he needs to be taught patience to stand. We don't want him to paw and to be restless. We want him to be patient and docile. And we want him to wait for us and be our companion and our workmate for the day. So if you'll look here, these are three new horses that I just got here in the last week. So if you want to look, Joyce, at these three horses. And this is their first day on the job. <clears throat> and first order of business is that I'll hobble these horses. And I want you to just look closely on how I have these horses rigged. This is a very humane way of doing it. There's no pain involved. There's no restriction. I'm not tying their head down uncomfortably. But what I'm doing is, is I'm giving him a do not exceed barrier with his head. That if he were to rear up or want to pick his head up, he's going to give himself release in his pole and his neck. These hobbles are here for him to stand still and to be obedient and to learn to stand, to learn to yield his feet. So I'm going to get on his back one of these days, or one of my riders, and we're going to ask him to move his feet from up top, but we got to be able to control those feet now. So he's got, this is his first encounter with yielding, okay? So we're going to ask him to yield lots of other things, but this is his first encounter. And so he's got to stand here, and I call it pray. He needs to pray a little bit. And some horses are worse than others. You know, some horses, like this horse, took to it like a duck to water. Two minutes, we were done and he's not restless and he's not fighting the hobbles. Now I've had horses that literally wore the hair off their ankles trying to get out of them. Well, that tells me that their mind is not occupied. Their mind's somewhere else. They're, they're, uh, they're not thinking what we're thinking. This is what we want right here. And I'll leave him stand here a while, and then I'll come take him off. And uh, we've got him prepared now for his side reins where he's giving, where I don't want to put his side reins on before I've accomplished this, because he's just going to fight the side reins. But now I'll show you here later on, I'll put this horse in the side reins, and he'll flex his neck and pull very softly, and then I can start schooling him in his transitions and in his uh, uh, free lunging without having a ruckus. So, once again, Joyce, I want you to zoom in so folks can see how this is all rigged. This is about a 15-foot piece of rope that's tied to a rope holder. And I make sure that this nose band is up about this high. I don't want to 
damage his nose it's down here where his cartilage is. So this is the proper placement for that. Okay, then the rope goes between his legs and around his withers. Now make sure you don't tie him too tight and restrict him too much. So if you look at this horse over here, see how he can stand in his natural headset. He's comfortable. So if I were tied, if I tied him up without the tie down, he'd be holding his head naturally like that. Now, if you look at the yellow horse over here, see how she's standing there and she's giving her self-release. And she's doing what I call praying. She's just praying that, you know, there's, uh, she doesn't have anything else to do today but to learn this. If I didn't have her tied up out here, she'd be standing in her stall. So she might as well be standing out here learning something in the meantime. So with that all said, be very careful doing this. Don't skip any steps. Prepare your horse properly. Watch my other videos. Get prepared. Get your horse softened in hand and, and uh, get their feet yielding with your rope like I showed you in my other video. And then what you can do is hobble your horse like this. Go get another horse that needs schooled mounted and be riding that other horse. And so today we can be training other horses and schooling other horses while these horses are learning this. So we're actually training and schooling three or four horses at one time. And it makes your time much more efficient. So that's how I recommend doing it. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at uh, whfarmhorses at gmail.com or you can friend me on Facebook. There's a link on our website at uh, windyhillfarm.net. And that's what I recommend. Thank you.